All right, what's up, guys? This is my first tutorial in Blender. Um, so we're just going to see how this goes. My goal is to create uh, a rotating cube glowy sphere, just a really quick design, kind of like you see here. It looks really cool, and I think it's really simple. Um, so this is my first time playing with Blender. I really just started playing with it over the last week or so and wanted to pass it on to my Digital 2 students. Um, it is a free software. It's kind of like Maya, like what we use, but it's uh, got a lot of other stuff in it. You can do 3D animation, 2D animation, um, digital sculpting. Uh, and a ton, ton, ton more. It is free, uh, so go ahead and download that on your home computer if uh, you can. Um, highly recommended. Awesome stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new document really quickly, um, just to start fresh. Um, I teach Maya, which is an Autodesk software, and I have a handful of other videos for that one. Um, so there's some hotkeys, and I gotta move myself here. There's some hotkeys that uh, will be similar, some that'll be different. Um, like we start off with this basic basic cube. Um, first thing, if I just go over there, I'm going to hit X on the keyboard to delete it, um, which is actually funny because my next step is going to be to make a new cube. The first thing I want to do is uh, show a few basic tools. Um, so over here I have my selection tool and then my like move, rotate, and scale tools just like uh, we see in Maya. However, the hotkeys to access them are different. In Maya it's like W-E-R whatever, but in Blender um, if you hit, what is it, uh, shift spacebar, your cursor then lets you choose between move, rotate, scale, and transform, which is kind of all three of those combined. So you can click one of these, G for grab, R for rotate, S for scale. Um, so if I have an object, to create an object in Blender, I hit shift A, shift and A on my keyboard, and I can create a handful of things. So let's go ahead and recreate that cube that we just deleted. And now if I, uh, once again, shift spacebar, and then I can pick one of these. Uh, just by hit, if I want to move it, I can hit G, and that lets me start to move just like I normally would in um, in uh, Maya. So um, I have a cube, pretty cool, pretty easy. Uh, other things is over here I have my zoom tools. If you have a mouse, I'm not using a mouse right now, but if you have a mouse, you can just scroll, it makes that really easy. Um, yeah, uh, I'm also just like rotating with uh, the trackpad here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, switch our views. If I hit Z on my keyboard, um, right now I'm currently in what's called solid view, um, which just lets me see all my shapes as solids. I'm gonna switch over to wireframe view, which lets me see like through the solid shapes. Um, over here on my menu, right now I'm on my object properties, which shows me kind of like, like the location, all like the basic uh, parameters of the shape that I currently have selected. Right below it is the wrencher spanner right there. Um, and I, I have a bunch of modifiers. If I click add modifier, I have this awesome list of, of all these modifiers or effects I can use to modify the object. Um, the one that I'm going to do for this tutorial is just solidify, which I believe where did I, oh man, where, where did solidify go? Still getting used to this one, right, right over here, solidify. So what solidify just did is it took what would be a hollow shape, right, just like our, by six planes, and made it, or gave it some bulk. If I change the thickness right here, right now my thickness is 0.01 uh, meters, I'm going to drag that up, and I can see, if I zoom in on my shape right there, I'm zooming in with the trackpad, but you can also use the uh, plus sign up here. If I zoom in, or change my thickness right here, I'm changing how thick the actual solid part of the thing is. I'm going to go ahead and type something in there uh, to be 0.65, and I want to memorize that number. I want to remember that number, because eventually I'm going to keyframe it to try and go back to that number. Um, so my thickness is 0.65. Um, if I hit Z again, I went back to solid, it doesn't look like anything because basically I have now a hollow cube but with a more solid walls. Um, Z, wireframe, there I go. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I am going to copy this thickness modifier. Um, so I'm going to hit copy right here. And now I've got two. And I'm going to move this one up to be a little bit bigger. to From uh, 0.65, I'll say like to 1.25. So now I've got 1.25. There we go. So now I have a series of cubes that I can start playing with. Um, <clears throat> so if I go back to solid view, Z, solid. Again, it currently just looks like a plain cube. All this stuff's inside. So the next modifier that I'm going to add um, is actually a wireframe modifier. So add modifier, and then I am going to find right down here wireframe, and now it's all translucent. <clears throat> so. Um, I don't really translucent because my uh, the whole goal was that they were these glowing beams. So what I'm going to do is over here, uh, I am going to go to my material properties, uh, which is this ball right here, this red one. I'm going to add a new material. So that's still to my whole object, my whole cube that I selected. 
And uh, right here, the surface right now, principled BSDF, that's just like the basic uh, material. I'm going to change that to be emission. Um, emission is basically something that glows. Um, I don't see it glowing yet, though. Maybe if I increase the strength, I'm going to bump my strength all the way up to like 50 or something. I'll type that in. And I don't see anything happening. Um, it should be glowing white. Why not? Because in my solid view, it's just showing me the solid basic shapes. It, um, if I go to my rendered view, it's going to take up my processing power a little bit more of my computer, but I'll see what it actually looks like. All right, that didn't do too much. It changed the color. Um, maybe if I change my color more, it's not the glow that I, that I was hoping for. The thing that I need to do over here is uh, one more property to change. If I go over to my render settings, which is a little printer icon over here. Uh, nope, missed it. One, one right above it, uh, the little camera icon. Uh, I need to check a few things. I need to make sure ambient occlusion's on, screen space reflections is on, motion blur is on for when I animate it, and then most importantly, this bloom right here. If I check this, boom, it's glowing. Um, so, uh, a few things. Now we can start animating. Um, well, right now, my world is gray. The whole background is gray. Uh, in my example, I had it as black. If I click on this little guy right here, the world icon, I can change my background color and just drop this to black. And now it creates a much darker space for my glowing cube to glow in. <clears throat> so now let's get to animating. Where am I at? Well, six minutes, that's, that's fine for a new software. Um, let's get to animating this. If I click on my uh, material properties again. Um, bah, bah, bah. Sorry. Oh, uh, what I did for my object is I just rotated the z-axis at 45 degrees, um, right here, 45, enter, and that sets it up so that I'll be able to look at it from multiple angles. Um, blah, blah, blah. But now what I want to do is I want to be able to animate the uh, different properties of this rotation right here. Um, so if I open up my uh, timeline, which depending on how big your screen is, might already be open. Um, right now I have 250 frames for my animation. I'm going to change that to 120 just to make it a little bit shorter. And I'm currently on frame 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a keyframe. This is just like animating in any other software. I'm going to uh, drop a keyframe for, let's say, the... Uh, the, 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 the ooh, let's uh, animate the thickness. Uh, if I go back to my modifier, I can animate the thickness modifier from... Uh, if I right-click here, I can insert a keyframe. So I'm saying, hey, at the first frame, its thickness is 0.65. If I go to halfway, which is 60 frames, let's say that this thickness grows to like, yeah, like what, like 2.0 right here, or 2.03 for me. If I right click that again, I need to insert that keyframe, and then at 120, let's have that go right back down to, it started at 0.65, which is the number that I used. I'm gonna right click, insert another keyframe there, move my playhead back, and hit spacebar to play, and I can see it's starting to animate. Let's play with a little bit more. Let's like, let's move more things. Let's uh, go back to my object properties, and animate the rotation of the other two axes. Um, let's say that, hey, it starts at zero, and then at 121 frames, so just past it, it will have hit 360. And what that does is that means that at one at the first frame, it will come to a full circle. So I'm gonna change this to 360. Doesn't look like anything changed. I'm gonna right click, insert keyframe again. Ooh, I don't think I added a keyframe from the very start. Um, let's go back to frame, oh no, I did. Boom, easy. So now if I play that again, I have the starting of a looping animation. Um, other things I can keyframe, just for the sake of time, I'm making this a pretty long tutorial. Uh, I could keyframe the other ro rotations. I could keyframe the, uh, I mean, really almost any setting. Uh, I could keyframe the thickness of the other modifiers. I could keyframe, I could play with the offset. I could play with a lot of these uh, animations to make this my own and not just a basic tutorial that, honestly, I learned from somewhere else. Um, so, uh, future videos, we'll look at like rendering, exporting, um, and all that cool stuff. I'm really excited to be learning Blender. Uh, thanks for watching.